Hello everyone, it's me, Anthony Coach, a guitarist on YouTube, yet again talking about Steve Vai. Now, not too long ago, Steve Vai released this album, Inviolate, and I've got to say, it, to me, just proves that Steve Vai is top of the game still when it comes to shred in the modern world with all these young, exciting players knocking about. He's still bringing out albums. I think this is one of his best albums. I love it. You may have seen this, it was, it, most videos he does gets viral, but this one was a very interesting one. This is the song Knapsack. I think it was his first single. And this thing, yeah, it was released on YouTube, which I suppose is the new single. You could be forgiven for calling it a bit of a novelty track because he plays the entire song with one hand. Uh, but the track on its own merits is an amazing song. So much so that off this entire album, there is just one guitar lick, phrase, run, whatever you want to call it, that he plays. And every time I, I would listen to this album, it had just made me, just, oh, just made my ears prick up a little bit and go, what's he playing now? What is that? What is that? So I thought I'd learn it and talk about it today. But first of all, we're going to hear Steve Vai play it. It's this lick. He plays it much cleaner with just one hand compared to me with two. Uh, but let's have a, a bit of a closer look what's going on there. So this is a series of implied chords as far as I take it. Because, you know, I'm just all I can do is scratch the surface and talk at face value what I, I've discovered. Steve I may well be working on some higher plane that I have not yet reached. <laughs> I, 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 because there's because there's some confusion coming up later that I'm not really certain where it's coming from. So all I can do is talk about what I do know. It's a series of implied chords. That first run that he plays. What are those notes? If we flip them the other way, we end up with A, B, C sharp, D, E, F sharp, G, A. In other words, it's an A major scale, but with a flattened seventh. What major scale with a flattened seventh? What, what does that make? It's the A mixolydian mode. But played backwards. Which to me implies an A7 chord. Dominant seventh chords is what you would get if you harmonised a mixolydian mode to get four notes. A, C sharp, E and G. What happens next? He ascends up the exact same shape, but is changed to a new chord. So if this is an E mixolydian, E, F sharp, G sharp, A, B, C sharp, D, E. That now implies to me an E7 chord, an E dominant 7th chord, so A7, E7. What happens next? F sharp, dominant 7, just the same pattern, descending this time, but using F sharp, uh, mixolydian. Then, just ascends up a D mixolydian, implying D7. So what have we got? We've got A7, E7, F sharp 7, D7. Then, that's descending down E7 again, gone back to E7. I'm saying E7, I should say E mixolydian. You guessed it, just going up the scale, the mixolydian mode, this time in C. So when I talk about being able to scratch the surface and talk face value at what I'm discovering here, that's as far as I get. They're just mixolydian scales, ascending, descending, sorry, ascend, ascending, descending, ascending, descending, going backwards and forwards. A really cool sequence. It's another word to use, a sequence to 
to play a melody or a run or a scale and then change its key. It doesn't always have to be diatonic either. So shifting keys through the seventh chords. The bit where I get a bit lost is, where has he chosen these chords? I've written them down. Where has he got this order from? I don't see the relevance, the, the order A7, E7, F sharp 7, D7, E7 and C7. I, I, when I was first doing it and I saw that he was gonna, uh, that he went from A7 to E7, I thought, oh, is this gonna be circle of fifth stuff? That'd be nice to pack into a nice, neat little music theory box, but no such joy. I don't know what's going on. Do you know what's going on? Let me know. Am I overthinking it? That's what I tend to do. It's what I enjoy doing. Uh, let me know if you just think, oh, he's just doing it because he thinks it sounds cool. What does he do next? This is even weirder. Something really weird goes on there. So he starts off just with just descending down the A mixolydian mode. That sets him up for a nice descending line, but this descending line... Starts off in E major with a nice G sharp and an F sharp. E minor, so it switches from E major to E minor within the same run. I'm lost, but then that's why I love this lick, because we get so used to diatonic playing, don't we? Especially me, I, I, I'm trying to get out of that mindset, and I'm trying to not always let music theory play the guitar for me. As I said, Steve Vai may well be thinking on these higher levels, I get, I'm lost, I'm lost. What do you think? Do you think he's just doing it because he thinks it sounds cool or do you think he's working on some higher level? Let me know down there. At the very least, I feel like I know this lick a lot more now. And it shows the importance of sequences. If you want to create, if we're going to call this outside playing, playing that isn't meant to be in a key, one way to make it sound coherent and not just going, uh, guessing at notes. One way is to use sequences. I mean, this is a very easy sequence, musically speaking, descending down a scale, ascending up the scale, descending, ascending. You could do arpeggios. Uh, uh, let's make it something a bit easier than that. Just making it up, but you get the idea that that little sequences <laughs> tie things together. That's, yeah, that's an interesting one. Maybe for a future video that I've just discovered there. Sequences cause outside playing to be more coherent to a listener. Anyway, I am Anthony Coach. I love music theory. Subscribe if you haven't already. It helps the channel out a lot. I'm going to go and practice some outside playing using sequences. I've just discovered it. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video.